Yo, welcome back to another update of my Canadian Dividend Investing Portfolio series here on YouTube where I am an amateur investor just documenting my experience buying dividend paying stocks in Canada. Um, I'm using World Simple Trade to execute all of my trades because it's commission free as you can see right here. I don't pay anything for it, which is great. And I'm tracking everything in this custom made Google Sheet, which you're going to get familiar with by watching this video. And if you're interested in checking it out, there's a link in the description below where you can also get a copy for yourself. So um, I'm looking at around a stock value of about $80,147 at the moment. Um, I did buy some stocks today, so I'm going to talk about which ones I bought. I'm going to add those into the spreadsheet so you can kind of see how that goes. And I actually received some dividends as well, um, which I need to add in here to bring up the actual closing total for uh, July here. So let's start out with that and then we'll come back and review some of this um, summary information. So we can actually pop open uh, Wealth Simple Trade and take a look in the activity tab, sorting it for the dividends in my tax-free savings account, which is what you see in the spreadsheet. And the last one that I've recorded was ATD, but recently on the 27th, I got $53 from Bank of Nova Scotia. That's pretty nice. 28, almost $29 from TD and about $14 from TransAlta Renewables. So I want to bring that back into the spreadsheet and record that in my dividends tab here, which is master list of all the dividends I've ever received. It's pretty nice. We're actually down at row 594. It's a lot of dividends. So I'm just going to drop these in in the order that I get them. And Bank of Nova Scotia, that was $53 on the dot. TD was $28.80 and Transalta Renewables was $13.70. Sorry, $13.79. Be careful when you're using a spreadsheet like this uh, if you put in errors it's going to like propagate through the whole thing and you don't want that so you do have to make sure to properly transfer in information as you get it um, but basically the currency of all these dividends was Canadian dollars so we can take a look uh, now that that's been updated back at the summary tab and we can see here that yeah nice July 2023 has been my best month for dividends to date kind of as expected um, you can see there's a cycle one high month followed by two low months going on and uh, as I'm depositing more money and reinvesting more of my dividends the amount of dividend bank stocks that I own keeps getting bigger and so pretty much the payouts keep getting bigger as long as the companies don't cut their dividends which I'm sure something happened around here or maybe some of their stocks got shifted they don't always pay exactly on like the same day uh, of every cycle you know like sometimes they might pay on the 31st of a month and other times the next time they might pay on like the first three months later so sometimes the dividends get shuffled around a little bit but this is the general idea that i was expecting to see it going up which is awesome so yeah that 459 dollars is all the dividends i received in july which i've been reinvesting some of the cash that i had available in my account today was a few of those recent dividends plus a 200 dollars deposit that i recently made um but basically yeah uh, that all of that dividend stuff means that i'm getting about four thousand and $39 per year in annual dividends and you're gonna see after I bought the stocks today how much that increases based on the the new dividend paying stocks that I bought um, yep yeah. so let's keep going you can see the account is slightly in the red we're down about 1.89 percent but I'm not too too concerned about that given that my yield is five percent and a lot of the companies that I own which we can see here in the portfolio are pretty solid companies for the most part probably the shadiest ones that I have right now would be the REITs um, a lot of REITs showing up. Maybe let's put this Z to A. Um, so a lot of individual holdings are technically in the red and my unrealized gains and losses, whereas fewer are in the green. But that's okay because I've been receiving dividends. You can see over here, lifetime dividends received, which has been like uh, in the summary tab all in. Uh, it's almost $7,000. So I have been getting money over the last few years, and that's okay. So some of the companies that I was looking to pick up earlier today, one of them was TELUS. Uh, TELUS is just quite beat up at the moment, down 13.5% from my average cost. And so that was one that I was looking at picking up. Another one was Northwest Company. This is a grocery store chain, um, pretty decent yield and not as beat up, but below my average cost. So I was pretty much okay with going ahead with that. And then further down the list, um, NPI is one that I've been trying to add to. It's one of my smaller positions, I guess. Not terribly small anymore, but it's creeping up there. Um, but just, just so beat up. I'm going to show you their charts in a second here. Uh, and also, Acon is just so unbelievably low that I thought I'll just buy a few shares of that while it's down. Um, but uh, nothing too exciting there. So when we come into the Sparkline tab, we can get a rough idea here. Yeah, Northland Power is just like down at like COVID lows almost, which is pretty wild. Um, I can look at, in the spreadsheet, I can look at positions one at a time here. For example, we can hop over to Northwest Company 
And we can see it's been a recent dip. We're looking at the last five years, um, as well as TELUS. And you get some of the basic information here that you would also get from Yahoo Finance or also your broker, such as WealthSimple. Yeah, TELUS also hitting almost COVID lows. It's wild. Um, and then the last one was Acon. Pretty big drop in the last little while here. Um, which you would see on, like I said, on your broker or anywhere else that you get your stock information. Um, I do like looking at extra spark lines though. This is the tab where I have all of the spark lines for my entire portfolio. You can see the REITs here are not working properly. Uh, and that's because Google Finance is just having some issues with them. But in general, you can see most of them are working properly at the moment. So when I was scrolling through here, I was looking for trends and that's when I noticed, okay, like TELUS was down. Um, Acon made this big drop because I don't have the time, honestly, to come into the portfolio here and look at these and like pay attention exactly to which ones, you know, like how far down it is and how high up it is. Uh, I do have a rough idea of it, but I don't often notice if one has like dropped by like, for example, if the smart centers right now it's minus 13%, but if next week it was like minus 18, I don't always catch that um, with these like individual movements of stocks. So what I find really helpful is using the extra spark lines tab where I can just quickly zoom around and I can sort it. Right now it's in the order of uh, whatever the portfolio is in. So right now I have it in unrealized gain and loss, but I can like sort this too. So it goes in like by sectors, group all of the sectors together. And then when I pop in here to the extra spark lines tab, now I have a quick view of like, okay, these are all utility companies. Are they all moving together? Well, I don't know, here they dropped, these guys dropped, these guys dropped, these guys dropped. So what's going on here? Uh, what's going on in this industry? A lot of them dropping at the same point. So this is something I just kind of skim for. Keep in mind, um, there's a lot of other stuff that you could be looking for too. And uh, anyhow, it's just something that I like to check out uh, that I find that the spreadsheet helps me do. So um, jumping into Wealth Simple Trade, and I'm going to turn off dividends and we're going to look for the recent buys and we can see here on August 1 which was today I did pick up a couple four shares of TD four shares of Northland Power um, two shares of Northwest Company and three shares of Acon so I also want to bring these back into the spreadsheet and I'm going to record these in the transactions tab again similar to the dividends tab this is a master list of all of the transactions that I've ever done so it's like monstrous we're just going to skip all the way down to the bottom Oh, that wasn't far enough. Um, here we are, down 731 rows. So we're going to add four more rows in here. And once all of that's in, I just check the totals here to make sure that they add up to what I was expecting to make sure I didn't put in like the wrong quantity or unit price or whatever, because this all gets factored in in the calculation to make sure everything's working properly. And uh, once I'm satisfied with that, the last thing to do is pop back into the portfolio tab, I guess probably the summary tab, and uh, take a look at what's going on in here. And primarily, I'm interested in the estimated annual dividend income going forwards. So at the beginning of the video, this was sitting at $4,039, and now it's sitting at $4,055. So that's an increase of about $16. So that's $16 per year in passive income that I can expect from, additionally, that I can get from the, the dividend stocks that I just bought in this video or showed you that I bought today, basically. So... Um, every time I buy dividend stocks, this number is increasing. I'm using my own money to buy them, and I'm also reinvesting um, all of these monthly payments that I get are going back in as well. And I'm just trying to build up what we call the dividend snowball effect, where you get that compounding interest, and this number starts growing, you know, because of my contributions, but also because of the, the cash that just the thing is generating by itself. And then later in life, when I'm ready or, or, or want to, then I instead of reinvesting it, then at some point I can withdraw it. And that right now the average is about $340 per month, but hopefully in the future it's much greater than that. And uh, that will cover some expenses and stuff later on in life. Okay, so that's that's all for now. Thank you for watching very much. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, leave a comment down below. I'd like to know how your dividend investing is going. And uh, definitely check out the spreadsheet if you're interested in it. Links are in the description below. And there's a video as well that shows you just how to use it.